halfway through this series then. And so far, Virtue Ethics has seen off objections from action, relativism, and moral luck. This time, it's the objection that Virtue Ethicists are selfish, which could be a bit of a problem if, as do I, one advocates Virtue Ethics for the purposes of political progress, which is kind of set against selfish bastards, somewhat. Virtue ethicists, it is objected, typically advocate the cultivation of good character, rather like a wise man strives to cultivate his own good health. Furthermore, it is alleged, the virtue ethicist promotes the flourishing of the self as the master value, the value to end all other values, the value to which the value of everything else is a means. Consequently, other serving virtues, like compassion, kindness and honesty, are only virtues to the virtue ethicist inasmuch as they ultimately serve one's own flourishing. Genuine morality, on the other hand, is about serving the interests of others, and treating them not just as means, but at the same time as ends in themselves. So much so that if one's good behaviour is even suspected of serving one's own health or welfare, if one is suspected of self-effacement, one will instinctively be judged by others as manipulative and immoral. Therefore, the critic suggests, virtue ethics fails as a genuine morality. Virtue ethicists do indeed advocate the cultivation of virtue. However, virtue ethics is usually associated with communal rather than individualistic modes of social explanation. Not least because without the cooperation of others, or at least a cooperative social environment, flourishing, including personal flourishing, is impossible. What is good for the self, and good for others, are simply not as distinct as the selfishness objection presupposes. Furthermore, classical conceptions of virtue can demand the destruction of our health, up to and including our death. And as the Stoics pointed out, a virtuous person approaching this fate may nevertheless have the consolation of knowing they've successfully completed a successful life, even in the absence of some immortal reward. So, the objection from selfishness or egoism seems to misunderstand what a virtue is. Virtue ethics need not therefore be selfish, and so remains a valid approach to morality. In conclusion then, virtue ethics is not, as some object, egoistic or selfish. There is then, as yet, at the conclusion of the fourth episode of this series, nothing contrary to cogent argument in being a virtue ethicist. Which is, in my opinion, a good thing. Because I think that virtue ethics serves progressive politics better than its current deontological orthodoxy. Which is why, next time, I'll be tackling another objection to virtue ethics. Thank you for listening.